warm welcome to another online service from Sudbury Baptist Church. Whether you're a visitor or a member of the church, we are all one family at Sudbury Baptist. We do hope that you are met with the presence of our Lord and that you do enjoy the service. If you'd like to bow your head and we'll start the service in word and prayer. Thank you. Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanks and praise for your mighty love. You say, ask and it shall be given. Today we ask for your hope and peace. Seek. Father, we seek your face. Let your living waters shower us with your blessings. Knock and the door will be opened. We thank you for your forgiveness. We ask today for your guidance during this service and our daily, daily highs and lows. Thank you for being our rock, our fortress, for your protection and grace, for always being with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we wish to draw closer to you to be more like you, to hear your word, minister to us, Lord. May your goodness and mercy be upon us. We thank you, we praise you, and we lift you up on high. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. We do hope you enjoy the service. Good evening and welcome to the notices for this week. Firstly, a huge congratulations to Mercy and Yaya, Big brother and sister Nathan and Michaela, Nathaniel, sorry, and Michaela on the birth of beautiful baby Jonathan. God is so good to Sudbury Baptist and our flock continues to increase. In fact, when we reopen after the lockdown, we will have to increase the size of the creche and a Sunday school for all the new young children. Again, God is so good all the time. A very huge congratulations to anybody celebrating a birthday this week or any other kind of celebration. A special big shout out to Amanda who celebrated her birthday on Friday the 28th of August. Happy birthday and also happy anniversary to Merle and Mr Anderson for their anniversary today which is Sunday the 29th of August. We wish them a blessed happy anniversary and to anybody else celebrating anything from the whole Sudbury Baptist family we send you all God's blessings. The notices for this week the regular prayer group meeting will be meeting at 8 15 on the Zoom platform on Friday. For those unable to attend but would like to send in a prayer request please contact Rob or Harriet who will be able to give you the information. They will also be able to give you the login and password details. The service today will consist of praise and worship with the worship team and the words have been provided. Please sing along and make a joyful sound to the Lord. Our Bible reading this week will come from Joan McFarlane who will be delivering that. Graham will be delivering our sermon and the closing prayers will be by our elder Howard McFarland. If you are watching today Sunday at 10.30, our regular church time, why not after the service pop along to Zoom and join us just for a catch up and a, just a brief chat. And that includes anybody if you're a visitor, we'd love to just meet you in person, even though it's over the Zoom platform. Thank you. We do hope you enjoy the service. you've done in our lives and Lord we trust in your own 
morning reading is taken from 2 Peter 1 verses 12 to 21. Prophecy of Scripture. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ had made clear to me, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure you will always be able to remember these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honour and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love with him, I am well pleased. We, we ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven, when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human well, will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. We're continuing our study in Second Peter chapter 1, and as last week, we're using the image of the Colosseum in Rome. Church tradition said that Peter was martyred in Rome, but the Bible is silent on this fact, so we can't be certain what really happened. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, if you remember last week, we looked at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 1 through to 11. We looked at that amazing phrase, his, otherwise God's, divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. We saw that God has given us the power through his Holy Spirit dwelling in us to be like Jesus. And we looked at our response to that. Uh, it shouldn't be that we sit, think I can sit back and just let Jesus change me, but it should cause us to redouble our efforts. Peter said, didn't he? Make every effort to add to our faith. The fact that we know that change is possible should encourage us, should spur us on to action. And Peter finished that section by saying that if we had that kind of attitude where we were giving everything for God, we wouldn't stumble, but we would receive a rich welcome into God's eternal kingdom. We are called as Christians to live with an eternal perspective and that eternal perspective can carry us through the difficult times but we're going to pick up where we left off last week with the second part of that chapter where well, you've heard it uh, read to you this morning already I just want to uh, reread those first few verses Peter says I will remind you of these things even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus has made clear to me and I will make every effort to see that after my departure you will always be able to remember these things. Peter knows that he doesn't have long left on earth. He knows that it's time for him to depart soon and to be with Jesus. And it's interesting that he talks about his body 
as a tent. Um, it's actually the same word that's used for the tabernacle in the wilderness. It's also the same word used by John in his gospel when he talks about Jesus, Jesus the word. He says the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. That word dwelt could also be tabernacled or pitched his tent amongst us. The idea being that Jesus was here on earth, but it was only a temporary thing until he returned to glory. When I hear the word tent, obviously uh, it brings to mind the whole idea of camping. I don't know about you, but I really don't like camping. I've only had a couple of positive experiences of camping. Um, most of the time I've been, I've either been too cold or too wet or hungry. Um, just not a good thing. Uh, some people love camping and they strangely volunteer to go camping. But even amongst those who love it, I, I should imagine that very few people would actually want to live in one permanently. Peter says that these bodies of ours are like tents, that they will pass, they will age, or they will disease. But then, when these bodies have gone, we get a permanent dwelling in heaven, in our new bodies. The problem uh, we often have is that we think that these bodies are permanent. We forget that we're only meant to be here on earth for a short time. But if you knew that your life was nearly over, what would you do? Would you do anything differently? Are there things on your bucket list that you would do? Maybe you'd uh, want to get your things in order. Uh, I always remember we had a, a next door neighbour a number of years ago and every summer she would go off to India. And uh, she said goodbye to me one year and I just had this thought, I'm not going to see you again. It was, it was really weird. I just had this sense that she wasn't going to come back. And uh, then I heard from the next door neighbour a few weeks later that she had passed away. And uh, I said, oh, that's, uh, that's sad. And she said, well, it was, it was very strange. But uh, just before she went, she told us, I'm not coming back. And she said, um, I've put all of my things, all of my papers, they're in a tin in the kitchen. And when I don't return, you need to sort everything out. Strange, but I've, I've heard this many times, that people get a sense that they're going to be passing soon. And, and that was Peter's experience. If you knew that you only had a short time left on earth, what would you do with that time? I remember a number of years ago, I was in a minister's meeting and one of the local ministers uh, said that he was taking early retirement. And one of the other ministers there said, oh, what are you going to do in your retirement? And he said, well, I've got a yacht and I'm going to spend uh, my retirement sailing. And this other minister said to him, he said, well, that's a waste of time. He said, you've got many good years left in you that you could carry on preaching the gospel. And you've got heaven to look forward to. So why are you retiring early? I said, I want to work for God until the day that I pass from this life. Well, that seems to have been Peter's attitude. He's getting old. He could be taking things easy, but instead he spends his time reminding his readers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter has been so transformed by this gospel that he wants all of the people he knows to have the same things that he has, to know the same blessings. And it's a passion that he has. And he's reminding them of things that he's always told them. It's not that he's uh, getting forgetful and repeating himself. Uh, I've noticed this happens now. With, with my family, they say to me, oh, you've already told us that. And I think, well, have I? Well, I am a, I am a granddad now, so maybe I can be a bit 
forgetful. But Peter isn't being forgetful. He reminds them of these things because he wants them to stay true to the foundations of the gospel. You see, it's possible for us to drift away from the faith to forget the basics. I was uh, going down the uh, canal uh, a couple of months ago and I saw this barge that had come away from its moorings and was at 90 degrees to the canal and was just blocking everything. It drifted away. You know, sometimes we can listen to a sermon and we hear something radically new, something that changes our perspective, or we hear something that gives us a fresh insight and we think, well, I've never really thought about it. Um, but sometimes, often, it's things that we already know. And that's okay. Peter is saying to these believers, look, you know this, but I'm going to keep on reminding you whilst I'm here. Why is Peter so concerned to keep bringing them back to the basics of the gospel? Well, the answer to that we see in the second chapter, and it's because he sees that when he's gone, false teachers are going to arise who are going to try to deceive them. Wolves in sheep's clothing who are going to try and exploit them. Listen to what he says. He says, but there were also false teachers among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. So not only does Peter know that he's going to be dying soon, that his tent is going to be torn up. But he also knows that false teachers are going to come into the church and seek to exploit the believers there. One of the things that God is able to do is he's able to reveal the future. He knows all things before they happen and he's imparted this knowledge to Peter. Interesting, isn't it? False teachers with fabricated stories and they will try and exploit the people. Peter is saying that these teachers are going to come along and they're not looking out for you, they're looking out for themselves. Maybe they're going to bring some attractive teaching, maybe they're going to bring some new teaching, maybe they're going to bring something along that you think, wow, that seems amazing. Now, the prosperity gospel says, come to Jesus and you'll be rich. And many people are led astray by this. So why should the church believe Peter, who's saying the same things, rather than other people who are bringing new, exciting teaching? And it's for this reason, it's because what Peter is saying is the truth. You know, we are living in a society where truth is not always valued. We hear lots of talks about fake news, don't we? And people will believe all sorts of things that come over on social media, on Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is. And they don't necessarily check it out to see if it's true. If it sounds sensational, if it sounds interesting, they will follow it. They'll believe it. But as Christians, we need to be committed to truth. We need to check things out. Jesus said, didn't he? You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. How do we know which is true? Well, Peter says that the false teachers have fabricated stories. But what I'm telling you is true. Listen to what he says in verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. 
He received honour and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from the heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Do you remember that story? It's in three of the Gospels. Jesus went up the mountain with Peter and James and John and suddenly his face was changed and his garments were changed and he shone brightly. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what it must have been like for Peter and James and John? They must have been terrified. Um, Peter said, oh, um, shall we pitch some tents here for you? And for Moses and Elijah, who had also appeared with Jesus. Um, uh, it says that he didn't really know what he was doing. He had blown his mind. And then there was that voice that came from heaven. It said, this is my beloved son. With him, I'm well pleased. What an extraordinary experience. And Peter is saying, look, these people are going to come along with enticing, fabricated stories. But those stories are fake news. You can't trust them. They're actually out to exploit you for their own, out of their own greed. But you can trust me because what I'm telling you is based on what I actually saw. And you know, this isn't the only story that Peter had. He was there with the other apostles when he saw Jesus risen from the dead. And Paul says that Jesus appeared to more than 500 people at the same time. Our gospel, the truth of the gospel, is not based on fabricated stories, but it's based on what really happened. Don't be hoodwinked by people who bring something that is exciting but isn't true. These people are coming to exploit you. Whereas I'm here, Peter's saying, telling you the truth, to build you up, to strengthen your faith. Hold on to the basics of the gospel, is what he's saying. Never tire of hearing the basics of what Jesus has done for you, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Peter said that as a result of that experience, something extraordinary happened. Listen, he says, we also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. When God spoke, this is my son whom I love. For Peter, it sealed in his heart things that he'd known as a child, the things of his Jewish faith, it sealed them. The words of the prophets that were written that were predicting the coming of Jesus, it confirmed them. And if you like, he was, he's kind of saying, look, I, I met Jesus. He fulfilled the promises in the Bible. And now I believe the Bible even more than I did before. You know, I've heard people uh, say to me sometimes that they've, they've grown up as Christians and they've kind of always believed the Bible and then something's happened. There's been an experience they have and it's like suddenly all that, those years of coming to church and, and being part of the services and reading the Bible, suddenly it's all become much clearer. It's like a light has gone on. And for Peter, this, this transfiguration was one of those uh, light experiences. But Peter, having had this great experience, uh, doesn't just want us to believe it because he says so, but he wants each one of us to have that same encounter with God too. 
listen to what he says, when he says, you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. I remember 1979, I was at a Christian festival called Greenbelt. And that was when God opened my heart to believe the truth of the gospel. Whereas I hadn't believed it at all before. It was a, a light went on inside me and suddenly I knew that I had a father in heaven who loves me. I knew who had created this world that I saw all around me and I felt completely at peace. It was an extraordinary transforming moment that has never left me. And, and Peter is saying for each one of us, open up your heart to God. Let his light shine in you and you'll have a story to tell as well. It may not be as dramatic as Peter's. You may not see Jesus transfigured. But every testimony is wonderful. You'll join that long line of people who have been changed by Jesus. One day, this earthly tent of yours will be torn down, but you'll then step into glory and enter into your permanent home. Until that day, let's stay true to the gospel of Jesus. Let's pray. Let us pray in closing. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's message. It's a reminder that all scripture and prophecy was inspired by you. You are the author and finisher of our faith. Hence, we should always put our trust in you. Doing what you said with all our hearts and minds. Help us not to become over familiar with you, but always reverence your majesty, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen.
come to the end of the service, we do hope that you've been met by the presence of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord face, turn his face towards you and give you peace. We will end the service with the grace said together in one accord. We do hope, wish you a truly blessed week ahead. The grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless.